Yes. <laughs> yes. Sure. That power there. Power that got put up. Uh, the expected date that it'll All be All right. Are we are we on We're recording? Yeah. Good morning, everybody. Welcome to Economic Growth and Development, May 24th. Um, we have a quorum, sort of, barely. We do have a quorum. <laughs> Nobody's allowed to get up and leave this room. Unbelievable. <laughs> Just saying. Has everybody had a chance to look at the April 20th meeting minutes? Yes, no? Yes. Changes, comments, questions? <laughs> Can I have a motion to approve? I'll make that motion. Thank you, Supervisor Fraser. I'll second. second it. Thank you, Supervisor Wild. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Carry it. Uh, first on our agenda, we have Annie from Workforce uh, and Training. Annie, are you there? I am here, yes. Thank you. Good morning. How are you? Good morning. I'm very well. How are you? Good, thank you. So go ahead. I'll let you proceed with your agenda. Okay, thank you, madam. Uh, we do have two actions to the agenda. The first one would be a resolution request to amend the budget. We did receive some dislocated worker grant funds um, with Iowa money. We owe money from New York State. So you need a motion to bring that to the floor? Yes. I'll, I'll make the motion. Supervisor Wild on the motion and Supervisor Frazier on the second. Are there any questions? Discussion? All right, I'll call the question. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Carried. Annie, what's next? Thank you. Um, the second would be um, a resolution request to transfer funds it's a carryover budget adjust adjustment uh, from in the New World Platform purposes. Can I have a motion to bring this to the floor? I'll make the motion. I'll Supervisor Frazier on the motion and Supervisor Wild on the second. Any further discussion or questions? I'll call the question. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Carried. Thank you. Annie, is that it? That's all we have. Thank you very much. Great Thanks for being with us this morning. <laughs> Thank you. It's my pleasure. Next on the agenda, well, actually, I'm, I'm going to sneak this in there. Jim Siplon is with us from Warren County EDC. Jim? Where is Jim? He's right yeah. there. Oh, there he is. <laughs> I'm looking for you on the screen. I wasn't looking for you in person. Can you hear me? Uh, a little louder, please. That's the last, the first time anyone's asked me to be a little louder, <laughs> but I'm happy to oblige. So um, we're, we're gonna try to throw some charts up here. It'll just take a second, but man, it's really serious in here today. I, I don't know if you guys know, but today is a great day to be in Warren County. It is beautiful and the economy is recovering and we're not wearing masks. <laughs> this is as good a day as I've had in the last year. Amen. <laughs> But I'll, I'll get serious, you know, because that seems to be the tone here. Yeah. <laughs> um, I'm going to give you a quick update. I, uh, I want to speed through this, but there are two or three things that are important to keep you updated on. Our broadband status, I'm going to give you a couple of uh, insights to some of the data that is now coming in and what's happening next. We're gonna talk a little bit about housing. It's an enormous uh, topic right now. I want you to understand the activities that we're engaging in and uh, what's gonna happen around that. And I wanna give you a quick update around business activity in the county so that you're aware of the opportunities that we're seeing. So the first, thank you very much. Um, we can click to the next chart. Can I do that or do you have to do that? Okay, so th this is a whole bunch of words, but uh, let me just tell you where we stand on broadband. Uh, there are three phases of the work, physical inventory, surveying our residents and businesses, and then integrating all that data. We're now into that third phase. The uh, survey responses have been excellent. However, we are going to reopen the survey in two particular areas, perhaps more, but in the Lake Luzerne area 
and in the Hague area, because of a, a fair amount of seasonal residents, we've gotten ECC to agree to allow us to reopen the survey. We want to make sure that we get the input from people who were not here during the off season uh, to share with us their in, uh, impressions of the effectiveness and speeds of their internet connections, or even if they have one. So uh, we'll be engaging with those communities directly to try to increase the uh, response. Now, the response rate has been fantastic throughout the county. So this is not an issue where we are short on residents. I just want to make sure every part of the county is well represented in the numbers that we've collected. Uh, the other thing I want to mention is, is we are working with the rest of the North Country to figure out the process to regionalize. I'm going to show you some uh, maps in a second that will help uh, crystallize why that's so important. But um, we're also doing some work in the city and in parts of Queensbury to better define some of the places where there are multiple carriers that have fiber. The fact that we have fiber uh, is sometimes not enough if there's a place where there's two or three uh, unique fibers. So we're we're having to work through that process. And in, in, we may wind up having to talk to you, Ryan, because you're the one who acts as the uh, keeper of the plan of record for at least some of those. Um, so more work to go on there. Can we click through to the next chart? So this next chart is, is one of the maps that I wanted to share with you that's coming out of the data. There we go. So all those dots represent different types of uh, internet and the, the green dots are cable. And you can see the plethora of those are in Glens Falls, Queensbury, and then run up kind of along the North way. Uh, the blue dots are fiber. The, uh, the DSL is yellow. If you look at the DSL and the uh, orange, which is satellite, all of those, while they meet the most basic definition of broadband, do not really meet the functional definition of broadband. So anywhere where you see a yellow or red dot, even though there is theoretical connectivity, we're, we're still operating at a disadvantage. Would you mind clicking to the next chart? This chart actually is one of the, the many charts we've begun to digest around people's perception of their service. Anywhere where you see a red dot, they literally are telling you they are not able to purchase the internet connectivity that they need. That does not necessarily mean that they're not able to pay, purchase any capability. It means that, for instance, if they have DSL or satellite, and they feel like that is not meeting their needs, they still answer the question no. If you look at how much red is there, this is an important point. This is what gets to the, the what I would consider to be the uh, problem we have with current definitions. Most of those red dots have the ability to access some form of connectivity, but those red dots are telling you that it is not sufficient for them. So if we were to ask some parts of the uh, infrastructure that has delivered broadband to date, whether or not those red dots are connected, the answer would come back yes. If you ask the residents themselves, everywhere where there's a red dot, they're telling you no. And obviously you can see the majority of those red dots are in what I would consider to be the outer county. Now there's also an interesting point. I, I, I want your eyes to go up towards the Northwest corner in Andrea's world, North Creek. Look at all those red dots that we know Frontier is providing service in Johnsburg, but look at all those red dots right along the county line. Now I've, I've taken a look at some of the information that's sitting on the other side of that border in Indian Lake. And there's also a whole bunch of red dots. If we look at this county by county, even given the number of red dots there are in North Creek, we may or may not meet the threshold for investing. But if we were to combine that with the same or more red dots that are sitting just on the other side of that line in Indian Lake, we're clearly getting to a place where even the carriers would see this as an investable opportunity. We've got to start looking at this information without the boundary and looking at it from a people's perspective. So uh, there are other places as we border Saratoga County, as we border Washington County, as we border Essex County, where this same situation is true. I also would point out that it's gonna be very difficult for places on the other side of Warren County to justify their build outs if we don't justify it leading to them. So for instance, that route that runs through Johnsburg to Indian Lake has gotta go through Johnsburg to get to Indian Lake. 
If we don't invest in it, they've got no chance in it. This is why we've got to raise our gaze. And this is why we're trying to take a very considered, deliberate approach on behalf of the county to not only solve our problem, but to make our data available and aggregated with others to try to accomplish more for the North Country collectively. Now, this will be hard, but it's not impossible. You already work very well on a number of inter-county issues with your neighbors. So this will just become the newest area, I think, for uh, that work. All right. I'd like to click over to housing now, which is the next set of charts. Um, there you go. So we have initiated a housing work group. We formally reached out. I think the letter went out on Friday. I don't know if you received it yet, Ryan, but we, we reached out to a county administrator and the administrators in the towns of uh, Queensbury and uh, in the city of Glens Falls to help us flesh out uh, the, the work that's already been done in all of those areas as a part of the core working group that is collecting data right now. We've already met with the head of the local Southern Adirondack Realty Association, which essentially acts as the collection point for all realtors in this part of New York. They shared some interesting data with us. Uh, uh, some of you may know that this past week, Glens Falls metropolitan area was named the 10th hottest housing market in America, as measured by the increase of the median home price year over year. That metro area is bigger than Glens Falls, but that's the way that it is depicted on uh, the national data. But it, it, what it's doing is bringing to a point something that we already know anecdotally, and that is that there is enormous interest and pressure on our housing stock. One thing that I think is really important is that we not mischaracterize this. This is not a crisis. I have to say this to my own team. I have to say this to realtors. I have to say this to people who are looking for homes. I have to say this to prospective employers. This is an opportunity. It is a problem for sure. But in addressing the problem, we get an opportunity to figure out what community we want to become. We are clearly in demand. It's hard to say that's truly a crisis when everyone wants to come to be a part of what you've created. The challenge will be making sure that we balance the right version of growth, the right version of economic development with the right quality of life. That's why we're forming this working group. This working group is going to put together the data that will help inform the conversations. These conversations, everyone has a right to an opinion on. But what we'd really like to do is to educate you as the policy making entity for the county and the similar bodies that exist not only in the city and in the town, but in the larger uh, set of municipalities across the county, and then eventually the public. We want people to understand, well, what do we mean when we say housing stock? What do we mean when we talk about transitional housing so that people who are aging out of their homes have a place to go? What do we mean when we use the, the term affordable housing? Where are the properties in demand? What are the right policies? What has worked in other communities and what has not worked? How do we bring resources here who have important information to share with us that will inform the work that has to be done over the next few years in order to address this? The market will certainly respond. It's already responding. When I spoke to uh, Supervisor Strau, he told me that there are literally hundreds of uh, apartments that are in some form of request or proposal to the town of Queensbury. Clearly, their developers will develop into this. But what we need to do is get our, our, all of us informed about as much of the data as we can possibly be so that we can influence the policy, the incentives, and the development to be what is needed to plan. And of course, this borders on the conversation, which I think you're going to have with the planning department about how do we address the plan to be informed of issues like this. We're going to try to bring as much data as we can. We're going to try to engage the county as directly as we can. We've uh, suggested that we get some representatives from the county, uh, county planning organization involved in the effort right away. Okay. Next chart. This is some information that may be insightful to you. Uh, building permits as they were issued in the capital region, 
roughly 10% uh, growth rate in the building permits year over year from 2019 to 2020. Now that sounds good, except for the fact that when you break this data down and you look at it county by county, would you click to the next chart? It's hard to read, but let me just tell you where Warren County is. 0% of that 10% growth. I don't know if that's where we wanna be. Essentially what we're doing by having net growth in terms of uh, building permits on a countywide basis is we're seeding the development opportunity completely to our neighbors. And in fact, some of them are growing at ridiculous rates. I'm not sure that's necessarily what we wanna emulate either. 65% increase in Albany County in building permits from one year to another. I don't believe that's where we want to go. Somewhere between zero and 60% is probably where we want to go. This is some of the information that I, you know, just start to tease you with because I think it will, it surprised me. And I, if it surprises you, uh, hopefully we can start to dig into what are the rest of the information uh, sources that we can use to figure out what to do next. All right. Jim, if I, if I may. Certainly. I'm going to get to the mic. Um, one of the things that I think is important to understand with, with this is what available buildable land do we have available? There's not a lot of it left in Queensbury. And then once you get into the park, it's a totally different situation. Mm -hmm. It becomes even more difficult. So it's, it's something I think we need to look at. Um, Albany may very well have been demo, demolition and rebuild also, but we need to, we need to dive into that to better understand it. But there is an issue with our ability to grow further because of our available land. But thanks, great slide. And my point in bringing some of this information to you was solely to, to get you uh, as aware as we are of the fact that there's a lot of data to go through here and not all of it is intuitive. Not all of it is what you would expect. I was surprised to see zero. I didn't expect it to be high. I didn't expect it to be zero. That clearly tells us that uh, there's an opportunity here if we can think through this collectively um, into the next wave of problem. But one thing I would also mention to you, you know, you made a very good point, uh, Commissioner Wild, Supervisor Wild, sorry, but um, that the park can't move nimbly. And we are already seeing people who are commuting into the park for job opportunities and living here. Part of the pressure that's occurring on housing stock in Warren County is coming from people who are working in uh, Essex and Hamilton County and moving into the jobs. Uh, I'm not making this up, it's, it's being talked about in the press, but we do need to quantify that. How many and exactly uh, what are the opportunities to try to help uh, in the park so that they can relieve that pressure? Because if they don't relieve some of that pressure, no matter what we do, we're gonna continue to face pressure that's caused by that. Okay, if you don't mind, one last chart here on business opportunities. Um, I try to give you an update on what's happening around um, the new activities that we are engaged in. Um, there are, since the last time I talked to you, I think we were somewhere in the low 80s. Today, there are uh, 90 active projects in Warren County. That means in the last 12 months, somebody has engaged us on either an expansion or a new business opportunity, and it would be considered active to us because it, there's been no reason to suggest that they've stopped. Uh, they continue to be broken down roughly one third, one third, one third between the city of Glens Falls, the town of Queensbury and the rest of the county. In addition, uh, there are a couple of interesting ones that have come up since I last talked to you. There is a, uh, a potential agricultural driven business from Washington County that has engaged us to try to figure out if there is a way for Warren and Washington County to be involved in their support and development over time. Uh, it's a very intriguing idea about using some of the products that come from the agricultural community, primarily in Washington County, but bringing them to market in a completely different way. If they were to do that, I think they're smart to realize that they would be wise uh, to include both of us in their development plans because they may, they may have trouble getting everything they need in Washington County alone. And it's a good opportunity for us to collaborate. So we're, we're excited to be able to do that in conjunction with that business and Washington County. Um, the other is there's a current Glens Falls uh, business, and this one really surprised me. 
It's a very traditional business that is looking to completely reshape itself around the concepts of sustainability. They're looking to completely change their technology basis and the way that they deliver services to be oriented around sustainability as the leading value proposition. I share this with you, number one, because it surprised me. Uh, this is an old school business. But number two, it tells you that the, the kind of interest in this activity is not solely from outsiders who are coming here, but from people who are already here that see this as a, a place where sustainable business makes sense. And then last, I would tell you that we're working very aggressively to try to figure out how we can expand the LDC's loan criteria to address areas of the recovery that are not uh, addressed in any of the current programs. Uh, we're taking that up with the LDC board itself, and we're hopeful that in the month of June, we will have some more information to present there. So with that, that's the end of my presentation, unless there are any questions. Yes. Hey, Jim, on the expansion of broadband up, up the uh, main routes, how likely, I mean, I keep hearing about all the money they're throwing at broadband, but it just doesn't. So we got to hit the trunk routes first before you're ever going to get the little pocket area. Well, depends on your, your perspective. If you think about it from a carrier standpoint, yes. Yeah. But um, I think we need, we're trying to get you information that would allow you to think about this in multiple perspectives, not just where the existing communication routes are, but where are the people and where's the need. There are some of those places that I think are going to be challenged to, to be cost effective on a traditional carrier's metric, no matter what we do. If you have to go five miles down a road that has no other uh, commercial opportunity, and then another mile up to somebody's house, it's hard to talk any carrier into that. And you can subsidize that into being, but they will fight you every step of the way. I, I think one of the things we may need to look at is how do we incent that particular homeowner to evaluate other choices and focus the resources that you're talking about on the places that will deliver the most value for the most residents. But we can't ignore both. You know, uh, every one of those places that's physically dislocated can be a, you know, an example of our goat cheese farm in Thurman that is an actual economic driver. And that remoteness is actually a part of their value proposition. So we're looking at satellite, we're looking at, um, call it private connections to a public network that the carrier wouldn't necessarily provide, but that we might subsidize a, a business owner to invest in by themselves. And we're also looking at subsidies directly to uh, people who need internet but that don't handicap the carrier by forcing them into an artificially low price. If we could somehow figure out how to keep the carrier whole, you know, we've heard, you've all heard from Slick, for instance, that says that they can't deliver service for less than $30, uh, you know, uh, to an endpoint. If you ask them to do it for $15, we're just asking them to go out of business. But if we can figure out how to get somebody who is having trouble paying for that, connected, that's actually good for them because we're increasing their fixed cost base. So uh, I, I think all of this is something that has to be evaluated and all of the money that is coming needs to be made available in a not just build out way, but to fund those various activities. Now we're engaged with Elisa's office and Senator Schumer's office on both aspects of this to make sure that as federal money is made available, it is not limited solely to carrier build out to hopefully give us an opportunity to explore all of that at the same time. That's a long answer, I know, sorry. Supervisor well, Garrity, did you have a follow-up? Well, yeah, I mean, you know, it's usually between communities, sometimes it's five miles, nothing there. And that's why we can't get natural gas up where we are. It stops in Lake George. You're not gonna go up to Route 9 with no, nothing between the two communities. And the problem that you have is, is even worse in the uh, farther reaches of the North Country, which is why when we aggregate this data together, that problem will become not just Warren County's problem, it will become the problem of multiple counties that needs to be addressed with a policy solution. So uh, I, I applaud your willingness to join uh, in with other counties and sharing this data so that we can advocate as a region as well as as a local municipality. There is going to be money that flows. We need that money to be as flexible and as responsive as we can make it. Supervisor McGowan. Thank you. Um, Jim, I really like the idea of uh, going across the line in the other counties because the uh, the matrix dot system, I, I really, that's a, you're right, because there could be just a 
bigger town right on the other side. So um, how do we work toward that goal of pulling that in I, it, as a regional map for the state instead of by county by county? Well, you already did a great deal of leadership in this case, because when you, when you initiated uh, your request on us to get going on updating the maps, we unleashed a wave of activity. ECC Technologies, which is the same vendor that we use to do our survey, is now doing that survey in 17 North Country uh, counties. 17. That's amazing. That what we did was essentially signal to people that this was a not only a smart activity, but this was a good process. Now, because it's going to be the same vendor, that means that we can share that data seamlessly, build one giant GIS map, and we can divide that up however we'd like. Now, the question is, what's the governance structure around that? How do those 17 counties or subset of 17 counties work together. I would suggest we're going to start with the, the group that are involved in the Lake George Lake Champlain planning board borders because those five counties have already effectively worked together on a number of recovery related works. So uh, we've been engaged with Beth's organization to figure out how would we start with those five counties, aggregate the maps and present to our elected officials, not only county by county, but one giant map that would show all five of them together. Now, uh, the North Country Alliance is designed to be able to share that data even more broadly. And I, I think that this is a yes and. We should do this in every way we possibly can to try to attract the most problem solving and the most flexibility in the dollars that come. But uh, you have already acted as the leaders. You were the first ones to move out in this wave of uh, what I would consider to be pre build out, which is updating the maps and bringing the survey data that didn't just show connectivity, but showed the quality of service, the speed of service, and the perception of service. Supervisor Garrity, did you have another question? No. Anybody else on the committee, off the committee? Thank you, Jim. That was really, really informative. It's a good time to be in Warren County, everybody. Remember that. Amen. <laughs> Safe travels, Andrea. Thank you. Thank you. And thanks for being with us today. Next on the agenda, uh, Gina, are you still there? Gina Mincer from the Lake George CVB is joining us today. Hi. Good morning. Yes. Thank you, Chairwoman Hogan. Um, I'm, I'm here to update the group on, we have a small group working, uh, discussing the future of the Lake George. And so far over the last six weeks, this group has met three times. We recently toured the facility with an official of the Macchio family that currently owns the Lake George Forum. And we also uh, toured their storage facility. There was rumors that they had sold off all of the ice making equipment, which everyone on this group believes we need ice, um, a future sheet of ice that would help the cool ensuring arena, the rec center for future events. So all of the ice making um, equipment is still intact, the Zamboni, um, the, the dasher boards, uh, and also all of the facility tables, chairs, anything that would be needed for a future event. So we are currently um, working on finalizing a pro forma of what it would take to purchase this facility, uh, where would those monies come from, um, the town of Lake George would be taking the lead on that in some way, shape or form. Again, nothing's been finalized. We would be um, looking at shared services with the Cool Insuring Arena in terms of operations of the building um, and to maximize just efficiencies between the two buildings. And um, we overall, I'm coming here today to really um, think about uh, in talking to um, uh, Supervisor Hogan and the future of this, uh, we would need assistance for a CFA grant. Uh, we have been in discussions with Dan Baruch in the town of Lake George, and he suggested that um, a, a small subcommittee of our group uh, work on a CFA grant through the ESD line item funding. Um, that could go for the purchase of a facility that would add to economic growth within our community. And so uh, we would be working on that um, as well as and in this pro forma, uh, we would look at a variety of ways of use of the building. Again, I mentioned the ice. Uh, the second piece would be events, a variety of events. The third would be meetings and that, and that meetings and convention world. 
The fourth would be film production facility, which it is already approved as a, as a, as a production facility. And Andrew Meter, our film commissioner, has already utilized that facility in that, uh, in that way. Also for concerts, we have Dave Eamon, who does a lot of the concerts in the region um, as part of our, our work group. And then the fifth would be parking. Currently, there are 275 spaces at that facility that are underutilized. Um, the owners have used, used them for certain events that have happened in and around the, the village of the town. They are currently a motel next door that they own, and they're waiting for an asbestos report. And once they get that, then they can move forward. Well, their goal is to move forward on demolishing that to make another 300 spaces. So parking would become a big part of the income of the facility in terms of the pro forma. So the last thing um, would be what we would need assistance with is overall um, uh, county assistance with the CFA grant, um, where, where we would work on that, the writing of that grant, but we would need, you know, assistance or support, not only from this committee, but from Wayne Lamoth's team on, on, you know, looking at what we're, we would want to do with this CFA grant to know that we have all the right pieces in place. And, um, and I don't know at this juncture, if, if it would come under for, as from the town of Lake George or from the county when it gets submitted to the state. So those are all things that we would need to button down over the next 30 days. Um, to bring back to this committee. And um, so really that's that's where we are and, and what we're looking for for the future. Thank you, Gina. That's really, really pretty exciting um, to see life come back to that building would be, would be wonderful. So thank you for all your hard work on that. And thanks for the update. Um, Supervisor Wild, Gina's gonna thank come you. back in June. So I was gonna ask that questions be Held off I have a that. question for Wayne, though, actually. It's related to, to um, Gina's presentation, but that's fine. No, nope, It can ahead. wait. Go ahead. Um, Wayne, if you don't mind, there are, um, it, I'm curious about how the CFA grant is allocated. How much funds, and do they look at it region by region in terms of how much we can get um, for those funds? And when we, if we did something like this, we'd be taken away from something else that's possibly on our infrastructure plan. Okay, that, that's more than one question. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> um, in, uh, to answer your first question, in the last couple of pages of the planning department agenda for today is a funding breakdown for the CFA by uh, organizations. And uh, Gina, I would ask you one question. Um, there, under the CFA, there is Empire State Development but then also under open enrollment is Empire State Development for acquisition and uh, the uh, grant program per se. So which one were you thinking? I, I don't know that acquisition comes under the actual CFA. I think it comes under the ESD open enrollment. So have you looked into that? We have not. We've only gotten as far as what we were advising. Um, Dan Baruch, and, and to your point, I don't under, I don't know I haven't learned the difference between the two. I, I just went by what was in the regular CFA under the ESD. So we'll look at that immediately and, and ask for your advice. Okay. Um, as far as the, how funds are allocated, um, well, officially the state will say that there is no preference given for any specific area. However, what we have found in most of the programs is they do attempt to do some geographic distribution um, so that all the funding doesn't go downstate or go to Buffalo area. Um, how they're going to look at that, again, is also the strengths of the projects, um, the return on investment, uh, their initial capital outlay, the matching funds that are coming in, other investment. Um, and once that facility or property or whatever is acquired, a key component is a management program. How is it going to be managed? Who's going to do it? Do they know what they're doing? Um, so, you know, all those things come into play to, to build an application. Um, <clears throat> right now, unless um, the, uh, you know, somebody else has something coming forward, you know, Jim has something, uh, we at this point are not anticipating anything under ESD from our department. 
It's not an area that we typically play in. Uh, that's more Empire. Uh, that's more EDC's uh, bailiwick. Um, but we'll certainly, you know, look at it and then entertain anything that might come along. Um, but it's generally more in the economic development side. Um, so that, that's best I can offer at this point. Thank you. You got them. All the questions I, were answered. I'm, I'm fine right now. Of course. All right. Great. Thank you again, Gina. And we'll look forward to hearing from you in June. And we'll move on to the planning department section of our agenda today. Wayne, you're there. Go. Yes, I am. Um, this is uh, a heck of a way to come back. My first day back from vacation, looking at, at the agenda packet, but uh, we'll we'll get through it. Um, the one thing I want to preface this with um, is the uh, Chairwoman Sieber uh, forwarded an email to uh, Social Services uh, Department to Chris uh, back in January. Uh, basically, I wrote, uh, the department wrote, a grant application for Countryside uh, for $300,000 that would implement uh, some of the uh, Beardsall uh, report uh, recommendations. At that point, the county did commit to providing a million dollars uh, of additional funding in the budget process for next year. That grant award for $300,000 uh, was uh, approved and the announcement came out, uh, I believe, Friday. Um, so um, I was just sitting here looking at my emails and saw that come through. And so that was a surprise to me, but that was a good application. Um, so uh, that's going to take a, a little bit of time to work through. We'll have to work with facilities and, and uh, Kevin Hajos on that um, because it's a, it's a $1.55 million project in total. Um, so uh, we're going to, we're going to be busy with that. So, to get to the agenda items, um, previously, uh, the um, last month, there was the uh, authorization for the uh, chair to sign the agreement with the state for the septic replacement program. That has gone in. The county has uh, uh, signed that, I believe, on Friday. Uh, we are looking to, with this resolution request, to establish capital fund H405 to implement that program in the amount of $340,000, which is a revenue from the state of New York. And I have a motion. Thank you, Supervisor Wild. Second, Supervisor Garrity. Any questions? Supervisor Bramer. <laughs> Thank you, Chairwoman Hogan. I'm just really excited that we passed this resolution on Friday. And again, I ask for people's support on my, the proposed septic inspection at transfer law, because I do think that we need to have money like this, but also the incentive through a mandatory program that requires people to start upgrading and replacing their broken, failing systems along Lake George. So I would appreciate your support. That's coming to committee tomorrow. Thank you. I agree with you, but you are shameless. <laughs> <laughs> I am persistent. <laughs> yes, you are. Any, for, any other questions? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? <clears throat> Carried. All right. I, I will say that there has been uh, quite a bit of interest in this program already since there was some uh, announcements made in some of the local papers. So uh, we've received a number of calls. Um, Ethan's been handling those and uh, we're establishing a list. Um, so we'll see where that goes as far as when they're eligible to, to participate. Um, the second is a request to participate uh, in a uh, en clean energy community solarize campaign. Um, Ethan has put this together and basically there's no cost to the county, but it, if we can get enough individuals to participate in this program, then the county could be eligible for up to $15,000 uh, for various activities related to the program. So uh, there's a resolution request to authorize us to participate in that program. I have a motion. I'll make that motion. Supervisor Frazier, second. Yes, I'll second that just for discussion purposes. Thank you, Supervisor Wild. Do you want to start the discussion? I would, if you don't mind. Okay. Wayne? Um, I know that, and I'm gonna, I'm a little slow yet this morning, but 
there's questions about the economic benefits of solar. I know the environmental benefits, but the economic developments on, or, or return on solar isn't necessarily always there, um, especially on single family homes, because I've researched it. Um, what else is Ethan working on and how much time is this gonna take? Because I'm not sure that this is, you know, a $15,000 grant that we might give and head out to other people, or is that grant just for us and our cost in terms of working on the program? I would let Ethan respond to that if he's on. He should be. Hi, hi, uh, Supervisor Wild. Hey, Ethan. Hey, so this is part of the uh, Clean Energies Community Program that the county's been participating in for a while. Um, basically, what we're looking at this item two is allowing residents to opt in to get solar their energy from solar um and not really seeing a difference in terms of um you know their billing they get a 10 percent discount on their billing they work out a deal with a solar broker that says hey we're going to buy these solar credits you're going to use them and it basically serves to you know encourage the acceptance of solar um allow you know more standard utility companies to use solar technology, but not necessarily impede individual homeowners from having to install solar panels on their house. So it's sort of a win-win. Um, it's just taking advantage of some of the incentives at like the federal and state level and connecting actual build pairs with those. Uh, the nice part about this program is that, you know, you really don't have to develop your own solar panels to take advantage of, you know, solar energy. Thank you, if you don't mind, Ms. Go ahead. Madam Chair. Um, Ethan, thanks. The, um, I, as you went through that, now I just have a much better understanding. We just approved the solar for the airport. Hopefully that's going to go through. Uh, and this is part of, uh, I believe the vendor's plan was, was to do just this. So it ties into another initiative and I'm all for this. Thank you. Cool. And, and just back to the, the point about the amount of time being spent on this. You know, I think overall, we'd like to minimize the amount of time spent on some of these lower return projects like this for $15,000. There's a clear public benefit to it, but we all are also sensitive to, hey, what's the opportunity out there to get bigger and better grants? And as we go into the consolidated funding application season, I think um, we'll be able to spend a lot more time getting higher reward projects. Ethan, Ethan, correct me if I'm wrong. It's kind of a step system. You, you take this step and then you you have access to other things and you take another step and is that correct? Yeah, correct. So if we participate in some of these NYSERDA programs as we have in the past, it gives us an opportunity for additional funding sources and um, you know, incentives and technical support. Thank you. Uh, Supervisor Bramer. Thank you so much. I, I was just gonna mention <clears throat> too that it is like the um, community solar project at the airport to encourage people to to opt into those kinds of solar projects where it might not be economical, like Supervisor Wild said, for them to put solar panels on their own home. So I think it's a great way for us to encourage people in our community to go green um, without having to spend anything. They just sign up and they're in. And they're saving money and using the solar energy. Correct. Thank you. Any further questions? We'll call the question, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Carried. Wayne? Okay, next is uh, agenda item number three, I believe. Yeah, three. three. Yes. Uh -huh. Resolution 407 ratified the county to submit, uh, ratified actions to the department to submit an application uh, to DEC for municipal waste reduction program. That resolution um, was an after the fact because of the time frames. Um, and quite honestly, it came through Environmental Facilities Committee, not through planning. But um, in looking at it, uh, that resolution authorized, ratified the submission, but did not authorize acceptance uh, or the, authorize the chair to execute any agreements or uh, anything necessary to accept the funds. So um, I believe that there was a discussion at that, at that committee meeting uh, that this was a 50-50 program. Um, that match would have to come out of it. But all I'm after right now is to authorize the, ex the acceptance of the, of the grant funds. I have talked to Kevin Hajos about this. Um, he wants to bring it through facilities as far as how we set up the fund, where the money goes, and, and how it's going to be utilized. Um, it's, 
Kev, uh, Kevin has a number of ideas. Um, there was some discussion a while ago about how to put a program together, signage and, and uh, public awareness programs and whatever. So uh, we're gonna talk about that, but first we have to uh, accept the grant funds, so. And I have a motion to bring this to the floor. Supervisor Garrity. I'll second the motion. Supervisor Frazier on the second, thank you. Any discussion? Supervisor McGowan, are you amenable to this coming through facilities? I'm I'm happy with that, yeah. Do we need to uh, include a, a referral or will it just go there automatically? The well, committee can refer it to the county facilities committee. Is that where it's going to go? It did come through environmental facilities. <laughs> environmental concerns, that's where it came through um, initially. So. Um, but I think because it's going to go through, uh, mostly, most of the activity is going to be with uh, Kevin's, hey Joseph's crew up there that, um, you know, it's facilities or DPW or wherever you want to put it, so. It sounds like Supervisor McGowan's okay with it coming to his committee. So. Yeah, we'll go through the facilities, yeah. It's really buildings, not really DPW's more roads and bridges in there, right? In my concern. Solid waste. Solid waste. Oh. Right, but I so I know, but he keeps saying facilities, so I'm a little oh solid waste. So so you mean yeah. you mean DPW then? Yes. DPW. Okay, DPW we'll send it to DPW. Waste. Thank you. Thank you. All right, I'll call the question. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Carried. Thanks, Wayne. Okay. Number four. So the next one is uh, to amend the county budget to accept uh, five thousand dollars from NYSERDA. Uh, towards energy audit, um, and uh, this was a uh, designation letter that was given to the county, um, but the county accepted the funds, uh, and now we have to put the funding somewhere, so we're um, requesting that it be put in the department's 470 uh, contracts amount, because there's a follow-on resolution that goes with this. I'll move it. Then can we move five, six, and seven all together? Sure. Five, six, seven. Yeah. Is that, is that okay? Fine with me. Yeah. Great. <laughs> no so that was a motion that. five, six, seven. Thank you, Supervisor Garrity. Second. Thank you, Supervisor Wild. You're welcome. Any discussion on this? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Five, six, and seven are carried. Or is it four, five, six? Yes, four, oh, five, five, and sorry, six. Four, five, six. Four, five, six, sorry. Yes. Thank you. All right, no. seven. Number seven, uh, CD 34 was uh, many, many moons ago, uh, around 1997, the county was awarded funds under the Canal Corridor Initiative. Um, we executed that grant, uh, undertook all the activities, uh, closed the grant with the grantor agency, um, and all these years, um, it's closed at the county, but all these years, there's a due to, uh, to the account and the amount indicated here of $1,443.34. Uh, I talked with the budget officer about this and uh, the idea is to transfer it from contingency. It's basically the county repaying itself. Uh, you know, the, the money's gonna stay in the county. What happened is as part of this program, they had a section 108 loan guarantee program and they had to have the grantor agency conducted a public hearing in New York City. Uh, that, the cost here is the cost of that public hearing, which was not eligible grant expense. So when everything got closed out, we had to pay the state this amount, but yet there was no revenue against it. And I thought this had been taken care of a couple of times. We did close the grant at the county's books, um, but yet uh, there's still a due to on this. So the uh, request is to transfer from contingency to clear that due to and basically the funding just stays within the county. It's just clearing a, a code. I'll move it. Thank you, Supervisor Garrity. Second? <laughs> Can I have a second? I'll second it. Thank you, Supervisor <clears throat> Frazier. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Carry. And eight basically completes that, that uh, transaction by moving it uh, from, the, uh, from the transfer fund over to the CD34. Supervisor Garrity, Supervisor Frazier, Frazier. Second. Yes. second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Carried. And the last is um, to authorize the county to submit applications uh, in partnership 
uh, with local municipalities or by itself under the CFA. Um, and basically what uh, I want to be able to do is, you know, start the process with this, come to the next committee meeting with a list of uh, recommended projects, uh, talk to the municipalities and uh, uh, the capital improvement plan, uh, review that and see what, you know, what the funding opportunities are. The CFA this year is pretty robust, um, and I included uh, with that resolution request a couple of pages from the CFA manual that talks about the different funding allocations by program. Um, the the actual guidance document I believe is 339 pages, <laughs> so it takes a takes a bit to digest, um, and uh, we've looked at various programs. Uh, we, there's some things that we think we want to continue. There's a capital improvement plan that we want to see if we can uh, pick off some items on. Uh, so again, uh, my recommendation is that we uh, start the process. Uh, my, and I'd also like to schedule the uh, public hearing uh, for the next board meeting so that we can get that out of the way. Uh, grant submission is July 30th. We do have the the July board meeting where we could do that if that's the pleasure of the, of the committee. Uh, we could also, if you want, defer this, this uh, resolution request to the next committee meeting uh, because we do have time. If we defer, we won't have time for the public hearing, will we? Correct. So let's move this forward if nobody has any objections. I'll, I'll make a motion to go forward. I mean, you're gonna reach out. And yes. Try it. Yes. As long as we get the list and compile the list. Thank you. I'll Thank you. I make the motion. Do I have a second? I'll second the motion. Thank you, Supervisor. <coughs> Are there any discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Carried. Discussion items. All right. Um, I believe Sarah will uh, discuss um, the next two items uh, on the discussion items. There. Good morning. Um, so first, I just wanted to give everybody an uh, update on the letterboxing trail. So um, this is a program that is part of a smart growth grant through DEC. Uh, we were planning to launch it last Memorial Day weekend, but obviously that didn't happen thanks to COVID. So we're doing it this year. Uh, our official launch date is June 5th. We're having uh, kickoff events at the Kinnear Museum in Lake Luzerne. And then also um, Martin's Lumber is having, uh, participating in that kickoff day. So for those of you unfamiliar with this program, there are letterboxing is similar to geocaching, um, but it's, it's a different group of people and a different mechanism, but essentially the same concept of a treasure hunt. Um, instead of using GPS, it's using clue, written clues in the form of a riddle and um, doesn't have to be in the form of a riddle, but we made ours in the form of a, like a rhyming riddle and uh, then hand carved stamps. So these are, are in waterproof, boxes at um, four locations in each of the seven first wilderness towns. We've coordinated with the town supervisors to select and finalize the, those locations. So there are trails, parks, um, museums, and then we also have a couple of events where the boxes will be available during the event only. So we have passports that are being printed. They're little uh, four and a half by five and a half booklets that have all of the sites in them with uh, spots for people to stamp the stamps as they find them in the boxes. And once they've gotten 18 stamps, they can submit the passport back to us and get a first wilderness patch. Um, and the passports will make available at um, anybody who wants them, but we're planning to make them available at the local visitor centers, chambers, town halls, um, the participating museums. 
and we should be getting those this week and we'll get those out and distribute it ahead of our June 5th launch date. Um, and I'm gonna, there's a website that goes along with this, these passports. Uh, so I don't know if I can share my screen, but if so, I'll just jump over and do that. So here is the uh, here's the website. This will be part of the first wilderness um, website. And uh, basically just has some information about how it works. Um, people can print their passport at home. Um, if they prefer to do that as opposed to stopping at one of the locations to pick them up. And then here's uh, our list of letterboxing locations. Um, so we have a variety of, again, hikes, museums. Um, we've tried to make this so that it, it would be difficult to complete all in one day. Uh, I know there's been some comments about some of these local challenges being too easy. So we wanted to make it a challenge, uh, but it's definitely doable in, um, in a couple days. Also people can get a patch even if they can't physically hike. The hikes are, are not mandatory to get the number of patches needed. So, so that's basically a very quick uh, overview of the letterboxing trail. Does anybody have any questions? Wayne? Uh, Sarah, you want to talk about Dylan's visit? Uh, sure. We had our grant closeout visit um, with our uh, rep from DEC, Dylan. So um, he, he was happy with this. We do have a number of uh, sites that are ADA accessible as well. Um, our grant rep is actually in a wheelchair, so he was able to test some of those with me, which was very helpful. Um, but I think about seven or eight of the sites are ADA accessible, and those are marked both on the website and in the passport. Does anybody else have any questions for Sarah? Brian? I have a comment. I'd like to thank everybody for putting this together. I think it's great. Can't wait till my little one's old enough to do it. <laughs> it. It is really fun. I was a beta tester and it was a really great way to get to know the neighboring communities too. You know, it took me places that I would have never found on my own. So thank you, Sarah, for all your work going into this. And I know you had some help and uh, it's just so creative and beautifully done always. Thank, thank you. you. Yeah, I want to, I definitely want to help uh, to think in particular, um, Gina in our office who carved all the stamps. She's an amazing artist and she did a fantastic job. And that's a major component of letterboxing, the hand carved stamps. So we were really lucky that we were able to do that with our in-house uh, staff as opposed to having to contract that out to somebody else, but she did an amazing job. And then also Sue Tucker, um, also our, our office specialist, she has been an invaluable um, source of help with just figuring out there's so many pieces involved with getting this um, off the ground, all of compiling all of the letter boxes, figuring out the supplies. Uh, so I, she's been an enormous help. Well, I look forward to June 5th and the opening of the letter boxing trail. Thanks. Uh, next. Capital all right. I'm going to jump over to the capital uh, improvement um, plan project. So thank you to all of the towns for being very uh, timely and getting your feedback back to me on these projects. That was, um, it was really helpful and I appreciate everybody having a quick turnaround with that. So that being said, uh, I've completed all the updates that everybody sent me and we're officially uh, making this website public today. Um, so I will send everybody a link to the website, but you now have access to um, view everybody else's projects. So uh, 
just a reminder that uh, this is this is the town um, dashboard here with all the town projects. So we have yet not yet gotten feedback from SUNY Adirondack or Cool Insuring Arena. So I just took their projects out temporarily until we hear back from them. As soon as I hear back from them, I'll add them back in. Um, but just a quick refresher on how this website works. Um, and I give it a second to load here on Wi-Fi, so it's a bit slow. Uh, but you can filter, if you wanna filter by town, that's a drop down here. So you can select a particular municipality and that will filter the list over here and the number of projects, the estimated cost, um, and then you can further filter the projects by the type of project, um, the priority that's been assigned by the person who submitted the project. And then you can look at individual projects by clicking on them on the list that will zoom into the particular project, give you uh, a description, as cost estimate, et cetera. And then here, uh, this click to download project sheet is a formatted eight and a half by 11 that has a summary of all the project information and you can just print that out. Um, so that's it. We'll give everybody kind of a chance to um, play around with this website, look at uh, the various different projects. And then hopefully next month um, at our committee meeting, we can talk about the next steps with forming committees to review and prioritize these projects. Any questions? This is just awesome. I, I'm speechless. It's awesome. Does anybody have any questions for Sarah? Um, the link for this will be on the planning site. It'll be on the GIS. Uh, so warrencountyny.gov on the GIS page forward slash GIS. I'll add the link. Okay, great. Are we doing a, a press release on this? We can. Do we want to? Yeah. I think it's really exciting. I'd love to see the information out there for people to look at. We, we sure can. Thank you. Anybody else have any comments, questions? Sarah, thank you so much. I know you worked really, really hard on this. It's, it's absolutely beautiful. Yeah. Thank you. It, I, you know, I can speak for myself from a municipal point of view. It's going to be a really powerful tool. And um, I'm just, I'm amazed with, as always, with the work that you do. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Um, there are, next, Wayne. There's two uh, referrals pending items that were provided. I believe item number one we took care of uh, by uh, uh, approving the energy audit. Um, number two, uh, we can certainly add it to the capital improvement plan um, if someone just tells us what this is. Uh, Supervisor McGowan. I figured since he was here, we'd pick on him, but yeah. <clears throat> you wanna... Yeah, I, um, if you want me to talk right off the top, I, I would have to. Uh... I think I think Ryan's ready to bail you out. Yeah, right. <laughs> Fire it up. <laughs> Um, yeah, th this this is a referral that we'll want to come back to. It's a little premature at this point. Uh, what what we're what we're doing is uh, we're working with Kevin Hajos uh, to work with uh, the historian and the others that are involved in the Joseph Warren Center idea uh, to come up with phases and, and, a, and estimated associated costs. So when we get that technical information, we'll be able to add that this project into the uh, capital improvement plan. It's, it's, it's not quite ripe yet, but I think the reason why it's on as a referral is whoever had made the suggestion didn't want it to be, you know, forgotten and, and never added to the capital improvement plan. Well, that's nice. Next time, would you please let me know what's going on? <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. I'm, I'm happy to see that moving forward, though. It, it is. Um, Ryan, if, if that can get fleshed out, there may be room in the CFA for some of those activities for cultural uh, you know, presentations and whatever. So just food for thought. Excellent. Thank you. Very good. Wayne? What, what else? That's all I have for today. All right. Um, Don, is there any public comment? 
Uh, good morning. There is no public comment at this time. Excellent. Any comment from the committee? Great. Motion to adjourn. I'll make the motion. Check. Supervisor Fraser. Check. Supervisor Wild. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you. We started late, finished two minutes early. <laughs>